Hi, everybody. Um, so it seems like we have a rational and controlling parts of, part of our minds that just love things that are atomistic, mechanistic, timeless. Yeah? You put them there, you look away, you come back, nothing unpredictable happened. Yeah? And it seems that the discovery of DNA must have been the wet dream of this part of us. <laughs> because you have just four simple building blocks. And the promise of, of, of the mapping of the human genome was that we could here just get the whole cookbook of uh, what was special about each individual, each species. Um, and the mapping went fine. The problem was that it turned out that only 2% of the genome actually was genes that coded for a protein. The rest was called junk DNA. Well, but then it got worse because it turned out that the 2% that were genes were actually identical to the genes of the chimp. Yeah. So, um, so it turns out that, that, to, that you, things were a little bit more messy. Yeah? Uh, there's lots of very interesting research going on in, in genetics trying to figure out how these supposedly junk DNA um, maybe controls for the how and the when of what the genes happened. But the, the message is clear, is that, that, that even genetics has to move from the age of the lone genome to the age of context. Yeah. To figure out what is special about us, we have to look at the, the historicity, the, the, the dynamics of context and transcription. Yeah? And my claim is tonight that this is not just about genetics. Yeah? The, like m most sciences right now are pushing beyond their own rational comfort zones yeah? Into, and, 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 and having to admit that there are contextual dynamics involved almost everywhere. This is in neuroscience, this is in economics, uh, in all these places, the old stale models are being kicked out. And I think this is a great thing. Yeah. Um, Heidegger uh, said that we are always already in the world. Yeah. And this seems to be the, the case all over our biological world. Yeah. We are all, the, the, the chromosomes is already in the nucleus. The nucleus is already in the cell. The cell is already uh, in the body, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, This means that, that we have the, the, a world filled with like layers and layers of membranes that has a, 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 a relative self-organizing inner with a communication to the outside with uh, semi-permeable membranes. Yeah. Of course, um, us human beings, we are born incapable of survival on our own. Yeah. We need a social membrane. Yeah. We need a social cocoon. Um, that, uh, and now more and more research suggests that without this basic uh, emotional comfort zone of, of trust and openness, um, th the brain doesn't develop normally. Yeah. So now there is evidence all the way back from, the, from these, these uh, social engagement to epigenetics and to changing of the transcription of our genes. Yeah. Okay, you might say, so what? Yeah. Everybody knows that context matters. Um, well, what I suggest is that if we don't take seriously that we are in the, in the age of context, uh, as a research project, then we forget that context matters because we don't know how it matters. And we have to find out how it matters. Either We either forget it or we deny it. Okay, so case in point. Yeah. Psychological gender differences. Yeah. So there's lots and lots of research, piles of research showing that women, they show much more empathy and compassion towards strangers than men. They're better at perspective taking, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And men um, apparently can even take pleasure in other people's suffering if it's somebody that they are not, <laughs> not too happy with. Yeah. So the, the easy, easy story is that 
of course, it's, you know, women are just like, they're just like altruistic angels, and men, they are called bastards. Yeah. <laughs> but if you, if you ask from the perspective of uh, an age of context, the, the discovery of difference should be the starting point of inquiry, not the ending point. Yeah? So when we say just, of course, what is hidden in that little just is like some kind of genetic determinism that there's nothing that we can do about it. Yeah? Um, well, if you start looking around with your interdisciplinary glasses, you don't have to look very far to find research that shows that social hierarchy, class, and power very much influences our ability of empathy and perspective taking and exactly the same line of things. So um, I am not going to go into any details or show any, any pictures of any politicians that might suffer this, but, uh, but just you know, underline that social factors influence uh, our psychological traits. Yeah. Um, and it's not only that the world influences us, we as human beings are masters of transforming our own environments and even ourselves. It seems that now in our plugged in world, we are uh, cyborgs of biology and technology. Yeah? Um, and we're proud of this. We're proud, we celebrate our innovations and transformations and ability to transcend our natural abilities. Yeah? I recently went to the Museum of Air and Space in, in Washington, D.C. And I was, I have to admit, I was swept away by this feeling of just this sheer empowerment and like uh, glory. You know, the sky is no longer the limit, ha ha. We can do, <laughs> we can do whatever we want, yeah? But it seems that when it comes to social and environmental issues, this sort of air and space attitude gets a bit muted, yeah? Um, it seems, especially in this current political climate as a woman, it seems almost like reversed, yeah? You should not change anything that is supposed to be natural, you know, much less celebrated, yeah? And, um, but of course I have to say, as I would not stand here Today, and I would not be a philosopher if it wasn't for the social structure that has supported me. I would not stand here if I wasn't a cyborg of birth control and good public education. Yeah. So um, I just uh, so yeah. So just to to conclude, I think that we have to face that we are in this age of context, and. Um, and, and sort of to sum up what that means for me is that, that the individual is something that is made out of a contextual process. Yeah? It means that to care for the environment is to care for individuals. It means that science and design are ethical and political. And it means that interdisciplinarity and translation is the norm of inquiry. Thank you very much. <laughs>